Hey, guess what? This week, the paint job on my Porsche 911 continues. Garage time. So I mentioned a few weeks ago that I'm working 100% focus on the paint job on this Porsche 911. And it's going pretty well, but these old cars don't get painted overnight. And I'm trying to be as authentic as possible in showing every single step that I'm doing on this car. So today I hope to get three things done. Number one, I wanna get some additional 2K high build primer on the passenger side. I also wanna work on the rear latch panel. Last week I prepped it bare metal. I got some epoxy primer on it, but it needs a little bit of body work. And then I also wanna work on the inside of the deck lid. That has been untouched. There's still a couple welding scars on the inside from where there was extra holes. I just did a really crude tape job on these windows. This is the section that I went through with the sanding block. So this has epoxy primer on it. That's why it's a little shinier than the rest. Uh, it's been more than seven days, so I'm gonna have to scuff this a little bit. The same is true for up here. So I ran into some bare metal when I was sanding, so I had to put some epoxy primer here to keep the metal protected. Whew, I just finished uh, cleaning my spray gun <clears throat> and uh, that stuff dries really quick actually. I let the air, uh, garage air out a little bit but this is already uh, whatever's a little bit left in there will not pour out and uh, the last I did a, I had a little extra so I tried to spray the third coat on just a couple areas I thought needed a little bit more and it basically wouldn't even come out so the SPI data sheet is right on you got about 30 minutes to work with this stuff otherwise it's done and you gotta clean the spray gun right away. Now I used my good spray gun, which is the Warwick, um, but I ordered um, a larger tip. This is a two millimeter tip, comes with the, uh, the cap, the uh, fluid nozzle, and also the fluid needle. So that really made things work a lot better. It laid down really smooth on the car. Let me show you. So I know this just looks like gray, but if you can see really closely, there's really no lumpy orange peel. It's just nice and flat. Uh, a couple little nibs in there here and there just from dust, but this is uh, really, really smooth. But it dries to a really dull finish right away. And then I had a question about the door gaps on the front and how the whole front fender lines up with the door and the cowl and all that stuff. So let me show you, uh, let me show you that. Okay, so I think the question was about this junction here where there's basically these three lines that come together. And this is a fixed rocker and a fixed fender. So this is not a gap that hinges. It doesn't open or close. This one does, and so that gap is a little bit bigger. The door needs to open and sort of go inside the fender. And then up here, there's a whole bunch of uh, junctions coming together. It's kind of like a little freeway here. So you can see from the top view, kind of what that looks like for my car. And then same thing as down below, this gap here is, is what I sort of call a movable gap where the door hinges relative to the fixed fender. But the gap between the cowl and the fender is, uh, is, is, is not movable. So this gets a little gasket that goes in there and I have a mock-up gasket in place of the same thickness. 
And that's gotten kind of boogered up because I had put some filler in this area here and some of it got down in the gap and it's, it's, it's there, but it needs to be cleaned out. So before I paint this car, I'm gonna remove the fender and I'm gonna clean up all this, especially this corner. You can see how gobbled up it is with junk in there. Okay, I guess the real question is, you know, how do you get it all to line up? So I'm gonna give you my, uh, my 30 seconds of advice. The cowl is fixed and back here, the rear quarter is, is fixed. Those are things you, you can't control, you can't do much with it. So when you place the door, you place it so the door gap back here is even and about what you need, maybe three and a half, four millimeters at the most. And then the door should also be centered between this opening and this opening. So get it close to the, where it fits in the back. And then this gap up here is adjustable based on that fixed panel. You can hammer, bend, move, whatever you need to do to get the fender to equal the gap you want here in the front. The other thing is this hood and this cowl is also something you can't change. So when you position the hood, position the hood first, the door second, and then the fender third. That gets you uh, about where you need to be. And then if it doesn't line up, like my car didn't line up, that's when I started adding lead. I put lead in here. In fact, you can see some lead right there. It's not, it has to be filled up a little bit. I put lead in here to get this gap correct, and then I moved the fender um, forward and back until this corner here lined up with this BA pillar. So that was my method. So take that advice for what it is. Uh, don't be afraid to you know smack the car a little bit. Um, you saw me do it with a, like a 30 pound dumbbell. I twisted the door. I got everything to line up on this car before I started putting filler on it. So that's my advice. Spend the time in the metal whack it into position, add if you need to, like add lead or add uh, weld bead on the edge, and uh, it'll make the painting process a lot, lot easier. Hope that answers your question. Okay, I'm ready to move on now. I wanna let this 2K primer dry as long as possible. Typically, I would put it outside, uh, but it's supposed to rain tomorrow, which is kind of rare for me. Okay, here's the current state of the deck lid. You can see this was originally Togo Brown and it's got a lot of uh, work needed now. So I'm gonna try to get the bottom of this ready for paint. You know, this side is really, really close to uh, being ready for paint. It's all smoothed out, fits the car really well. This is where I had to weld in some holes and I enlarged the holes and TIG welded a plug in there. So it should be smooth on both sides. I'm gonna have to put a little filler over that, grind it down a little bit more. Um, there's a hole filled right there too. Um, here is where I added some material onto the end of the deck lid to get the door or to get the hood gap uh, better. And you can see that when I welded this, this is you know starting to surface rust again. So this all needs to be dug out, cleaned up, and get ready for paint. Here is the uh, little shim, little washer that was required to get the height adjusted correctly. So I'm probably going to put a different shim in for that. It maybe looks a little bit better. Here's some um, filler that just got you know, th thrown in the gap and broken off. So that needs to be taken care of. So this deck lid had little uh, features right here to attach the grill, or I think actually it might even be for a wiper blade or something. But um, to make it look smoother, I deleted the bumps on this side and on this side. So a little bit more work to do on this to prep it for paint. The metal work is okay. So on this side, I didn't really realize this before, but there's a huge dent in the structure of the deck lid. I don't know how you get this part dented here, but somehow it's, it's pretty well beat up. So I need to find a way to get that dent out. I don't have really good access to the back um, and some of this is creased pretty bad. So I'm gonna have to massage this the best I can to make it look presentable. These bumpers are from URO and they work really nice. I love how they're adjustable. It makes setting up the height super easy. It makes fitting it onto the car super easy. When I removed this from the car, I removed it from this bolt hole here so that I wouldn't lose any alignment features when I put it back on the car. Um, but in order to paint it, it's probably best to take these bolts out here and that's gonna cause me to lose a little bit of alignment of the deck lid to the car. But one thing I've done throughout the car is drill alignment holes. So you can see this hinge already has a hole in it and there's no hole underneath that for, because this came from a different car too, there's no hole underneath there. So what I will do is I will drill a alignment hole in here so I don't lose the relationship of the hinge relative to the deck lid. That'll get it really close when it goes back on the car.
you've got the areas that were uh, surface rusted and anything that had flaky paint on, all that's been cleared off with the wire wheel. So now it's time to, you know, really tackle the hardest part, which is gonna be getting this dent out. Um, I also discovered that the metal here is stressed and cracked a little bit. Probably when this was hit, you know, the way it was spot welded together, this is uh, cracked right here. So the paint's not gonna do well on that. Um, now, the right way to do this is probably with a uh, stud gun or a uh, dent puller, which I don't have. Um, so I guess that means it's time to bust out the welder. I knew I spoke too soon on uh, putting away the welder. I'm sliding in this metal plate so it's like a little heat shield. That takes care of the little cracks. So what I do in these cases, this takes longer, but I welded a washer, I ground the zinc off this washer, and I welded it right to the uh, inner structure. This piece of wire is just left on, but uh, now I'm gonna put my uh, dent puller through here and yank on it. But when I yank on it, I gotta be careful I don't dent the other side of the hood because it's sitting on these, these rails. So I either am gonna flip it over or I'm going to uh, put some padding down before I just start yanking on it. Okay, I'm done uh, metal working on this little dent here. Um, it came out pretty good. If you look at it from the, the end there, and I know it's all different colors, but that rail is pretty straight from the underside. And then right here, this is pretty straight. There's a little bit of a low spot right here that I just didn't wanna you know, chase after. It would have been hard to get that in there. And then on this very tip of the corner right here, it's kind of this little mound like there is on this side. I did something a little bit new, at least for this car. I put some silicon bronze in there. So between where those washers were, there was a couple, you know, divots and stuff because I, I didn't grind it all down perfectly and it was low. So I just filled it up with silicon bronze. That should keep this corner as strong as possible. Uh, it's better than plastic filler here because you know the latch is right here This thing's gonna get slammed up and down and I just didn't want this corner to crack or anything in the future
I'm just kind of laying the file here. Now you can see that it's pretty pretty straight now. Um, it's slightly low right here and um, not too bad. Generally, it's pretty good. And then from this view, kind of the same situation. Um, there is a little curve to this file, which is good because this, this panel is curved too. But it's generally pretty close. making me hungry. This looks just like cocoa powder. I'm not going to go all the way down to bare metal on this. This paint is original. It's in pretty good shape. So I'm just roughing it up with 180, getting some of the uh, blemishes out of it. And then I'm going to put epoxy primer over the whole thing. That'll take care of the bare metal. All right, all right. This has been uh, drying overnight, two coats of epoxy primer, and uh, it's, you know, it's looking pretty good. But as always, everything really looks better when it's one color. I think you can see right here, this is the, uh, the top corner, and the factory had some seam sealer in here, and it wasn't apparent until me until I put the primer on it that it is cracked and it's wide open. So you can see that crack along there. It extends all the way over to here. So this little crack, um, I know how to fix it. It's easy to do, uh, but this is really what takes time. You know, that I didn't see it before. Um, I thought I was just gonna scuff and shoot, cut a little corners here and there, and the next thing you know, you're, you're going back and doing it again. Uh, so this is what I struggle with. You know, do I leave it alone or do I make it look better? Um, you know, some people would probably just leave it alone, but I'm gonna fix it. <laughs> Also, these hinges came out pretty nice too. Uh, they're gonna need just a little bit more uh, prep work, but they'll be ready for color here soon too. So now I wanna turn my attention to this latch panel. Um, there is a couple dings in it, and I just wanna make it uh, smooth. There's a ding right there. Uh, all these uh, scars here from when I removed that uh, reflector panel are, are still here. So I want to uh, you know, really smooth it all out and just get it ready for paint. Also, this leaded area here needs a little bit more attention right at the transitions. There's a couple of little pinholes and stuff in it. So I'm going to be uh, working on this now, but I also want to protect all the yellow. So I'm going to tape all this up. I just learned that masking isn't my favorite thing to do either, but I just want to protect the inside against some dust. You can see here, this is uh, now exposed. This is a bunch of, you know, filler that's just not, not right. So all this has to get smoothed out. You know, when I put the filler on, I spread both panels and then some of it just inevitably goes down in the, in, inside the hole and it globs all up in here. So I need to smooth all this out, make sure it's good.
right, just put a skim coat of filler here on the back of the deck lid just to cover up all those weld scars and also to, uh, you know, smooth out some of the hammer marks and hammer work I did here on this inner structure. So while that's drying, I also put a little bit on the back of the car. This is where I uh, removed a bunch of spot welds. And so that's kind of getting tidied up. I'm gonna keep filling and sanding. I got to the areas that I wanted to get to today. Uh, the next step is gonna to be to put uh, another coat of primer on this um, prior to it getting its final paint. Thank you again for watching and happy Thanksgiving for those of you that are in the United States. Uh, if you're not in the United States, then you know, be thankful for classic cars. And uh, keep the hobby going, guys. I will talk to you next week.